Hi, and in this revision cast, we are going to look at some more techniques that you can use, whether you're on the writing questions, story writing, or descriptive writing, or if you're on the language use questions, paper one, question two, paper two, question three. So, techniques are interesting because they can help the reader link two unexpected ideas together. A technique can help show similarity or contrast, or can just help draw the reader's attention to something interesting in a picture. And we are going to look at five more techniques today. We have already looked at five techniques in previous lessons for paper one, question two. We are now going to look at five more techniques. So we are here looking at our second of our content marks. And before we go forward, just check to see how confident you feel. All right, let's move on. So we are going to look at five new techniques. But before we do that, see if you remember the five techniques we've already looked at. Can you fill in these blanks? Pause the video and see if you can complete these definitions. All right, let's take a look. Personification is when you're treating an object or an animal, describing it like a person. A simile is when you say that something is like something else. And a metaphor is when you act like that thing really is something else. And of course, with personification, similes, and metaphors, this is all figurative language. It's not really true. You're just acting like it's true. Onomatopoeia is a sound effect word like bang, crash, or hum. Alliteration is when you have words starting with the same sound, like in that sentence, starting same sound. And if you're not clear on any of those, maybe pop back to one of our previous revision casts and have a look at those. So let's get on to the new ones. First one is juxtaposition. With our example sentence, one tiny green shoot grew in the endless field of dead ash. What's going on in that one? So juxtaposition is about this really big contrast here between the two ideas in this sentence. In this sentence, I've got two ideas, this little green shoot, little green baby plant, and a big field of dead ash. One's little, one's green, one's alive, One's big, one's gray, one's dead. I've got these two images. They're totally different. And those two images next to each other is a juxtaposition. If I were to write about, say, a tiny, cute kitten curled up next to a big, dangerous lion, that also might be juxtaposition. Or if I talked about how tiny people look walking underneath these enormous towering buildings. That's juxtaposition too. Two very different images or ideas next to each other. Oxymoron. This is like this sentence here. We've got two of them. Sorry, covered it up there. The sun fell upwards into a shining dark sky. Can you see what the oxymorons are in this sentence? Yeah, so oxymoron is like fell upwards or shining dark. It's two contradictory, two opposite words in a row. It's a kind of juxtaposition, sort of. But instead of having two separate ideas that are next to each other, we are putting two opposite words right next to each other. Oxymorons might also be things like uh, living death, or if I say the movie was amazingly boring. Opposite words next to each other. Up next, pathetic fallacy. Can you see what's going on here? Yeah, so pathetic fallacy is when we are using the environment, like the weather to show somebody's feelings or when the weather is like reflecting 
somebody's feelings. So the sky isn't actually miserable. It is just the people that are miserable. And by saying that the sky is miserable and crying, we're really highlighting how the people are feeling in the sentence. So it's a kind of personification talking about the weather and commenting on how a narrator or a character or even the author would be feeling. Zoomorphism. What is going on here? Yeah, so zoomorphism is like the opposite of personification. It's portraying somebody as if they were an animal. So you're, just like personification is using person words to describe something that's not a person, zoomorphism is using animal words, zoo like animal, to describe something that's not actually an animal. And then semantic field, can you see what's going on here? Yes, we've got a lot of words that sound like they are for a predator or sound like they are for hunting. But the picture, we're not actually hunting. We are just showing people that are doing Christmas shopping. So a semantic field is when we're using many, many words that are all linked to a certain concept or a feeling or an activity. Like if we see these highlighted words here, All of these words kind of feel like words that I would use to talk about someone who is hunting or a predator that was searching for prey. Even if none of these words by themselves are a metaphor, all put together, these are all like an extended image. So we've started out with an image, and we're just carrying it forward, adding more and more words that fit that image. And that would be a semantic field. So those are our five techniques, our five newest techniques. Oh, and one more note. If you start a good image, whether it's a simile, a metaphor, zoomorphism, personification, pathetic fallacy, if you start a good image, don't just move on to something else. Carry that image forward, extend that image. Because if you can build an entire semantic field, then you are writing at level three. So looking at this picture here, trying to figure out which of these two images would be written at a higher level. Which of these two images are building a semantic field? Yeah. So the better one, actually, is the one on the left. Because all of this imagery here, Vanilla ice cream, brown syrup, giant spoon, sprinkled, chocolate chips, all of these imagery fit together into a semantic field of ice cream. So all of these images, all of these ideas all link together. The one on the right though, ice cream, oil spill, flowers, tiger, none of these images link together. None of them link to any other one. And because they're not linked, they won't score as highly as the one on the left. So let's apply it now. If you scroll down, if you are on Activate Learning Online, open up the document attached to this one. There will be a couple paragraphs telling a short story. And there are a bunch of techniques on that one that you can identify. There are over 15 that you can find and identify. Good luck.